<laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I did. All right. That was interesting. That was interesting. Didn't know that. All right. Oh, hi. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm going to do the body bags review here in just a minute, but uh, I hope you can just bear with me. I'm doing my first time reaction video watching this movie. So, uh, yeah. So just bear with me. Okay. So, yeah, this movie I've never seen before. It's my first time reaction. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the part where the guy goes in there and he gets hacked up with the chainsaw. Yeah. 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 The alien lesbian hooker hacks him up with a chainsaw. I remember this part. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Good times. Well, now that I'm done with my first time reaction video, I better go ahead and start doing the body bags video. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Body Bags. I'll be your reviewer for today. I'm Lonnie from Horror Heaven 77. And uh, the... Okay, we're doing our theme week, and I decided on... Uh, we would review either an episode or we'll review an entire series of our favorite tv shows so the one that i picked i decided to go for ash versus evil dead now this show it ran for three seasons on the stars network and um i'm kind of at odds on this show because on the one hand i absolutely love it i would have i really kind of wish it would have gone on a lot longer than it did but at the same time it's kind of like you know it's really not bad that it ended after only three seasons because what ended up happening was it left us wanting more and it didn't wear out its welcome. It didn't, you know, just start getting repetitive. It didn't start going off on all these tangents and everything else. And it just made the show unwatchable. Uh, the show really works. It works really well. And, uh, you know, as a, you know, I absolutely love the evil dead trilogy and, uh, I'm actually, I'm pleasantly surprised that, uh, you know, somebody's started in the 4K game. I'm at, I'm surprised and, you know, pleasantly that, uh, you know, now Screen Factory is going to start dipping their toe into the 4K Blu-ray pond. Uh, I believe they have uh, They Live. That's one of the ones that they got coming. And I just heard that uh, a new announcement that Army of Darkness is going to be up for 4K Blu-ray as well. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to probably end up getting that one because I've already got Evil Dead 1 and 2 on 4k so i'll probably gonna want to get that anyway let's get into the show uh like i said i really love this show and if you're a fan of you know the evil dead trilogy and which i am the first movie i absolutely i love it it's one of my top three favorite movies of all time i could watch evil dead any time of the day or night doesn't matter uh it's one of those things if, if it's on i gotta watch it evil dead 2 I think is an absolute masterpiece as a lot of people um, just the insanity in those movies and the creativity, you know, the gore, you know, just, you know, those movies go so insane and it's hard not to love those films, you know, um, army of darkness. I know army of darkness tends to be a little bit of a thorn in some people's sides where I, I really enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, I am kind of bothered by the fact that it doesn't have a lot of gore in it and stuff. You know, it's, it does have, a bit of a, quite a bit of a different tone from the first two movies, but I really love that, you know, it was more about the imagination and it, you know, it was trying to pay more uh, tribute and homage to, you know, the work of Ray Harryhausen and things like that. But army of darkness, I really enjoy. I know a lot of people don't care for it because it's so tonally different from the first two movies and, and it really it has hardly any gore at all in it, but, I still really like those movies. Now, the remake, and I'll talk about when I talk about, you know, um, Ash vs. Evil Dead. The remake, when I first saw it, I'm going to be honest with you, I did not like it. Did not like it at all. Didn't think it was a particularly good movie, but uh, it's one of those movies that the more I watch it, the more it tends to grow on me. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, I mean, I don't mind it now. But when I first watched it, you know, when it first came out, did not care for it. I thought that, uh, you know, that the idea, I mean, I wasn't upset by the idea that there, that there was going to be a female hero and she was going to kind of be something of a new Ash and all that kind of stuff. It's like, okay, that didn't bother me. It just, they just didn't do anything with it. You know, it's like, and it doesn't have the imagination. I mean, like, for example, you know, one thing that personally I think would have been cool. What if say like in the evil dead remake, when they go to the cabin, they have like the, uh, you know, they find all the dead cats in the basement. 
how about like maybe uh you know when they unleash you know the demons the deadites and things like that why not maybe have like you know those dead cats come start coming to life and when you least expect it you know like the cats would attack somebody or or they would show up or something like that or you know what about maybe like you know they try to hike it out of the you know out of the woods or something and then you know like maybe the the dog grandpa gets you know reanimated and becomes a you know a dead eye dog and you know it's like keep you know tries to keep him from leaving you know, things like that you know that was just you know something but anyway so you know okay and now we get to the tv series you know all three seasons of uh ash versus evil dead and it's it's you know for somebody who loves the trilogy it's perfect you know it you know yeah okay yeah it may not be 100 percent perfect but it's pretty damn close to it and the way i kind of feel about it i kind of feel like this is just my personal opinion but i kind of feel like you know in a way like season one is like evil dead four season two is like evil dead five and you know season six or season three is like evil dead six but anyway all right so we get started um we find out that our our friend ash williams now it's many years later after the events of you know the evil dead trilogy and pretty much there's no sign of the deadites you know everything seems to be doing okay and he's getting ready to go out for a night he's planning to uh you know have a late night hookup you know so so he's partying he's listening to music and that's one thing i gotta give the tv show credit for is um you know they ended up picking really good music to accompany you know they picked a lot of good songs a lot of them were you know detroit bands you know they had like deep purple you know you had like billy squire you had acdc i know acdc isn't detroit but but um you know there's so many good singers in here you know so many good bands you know they got alice cooper they got so many people you know so many songs and singers and everything on this show which you know you would think what you think it would kind of end up hindering the you know the flow and you know like the vibe of evil dead but no actually they picked the right songs and the right music cues and it really does work you know in in the series but Another thing that was great, too, about the music was that they got Joe LaDuca, who, you know, did the music score in the original trilogy. They got him to come back and, you know, do the score for, you know, the TV series, which was awesome. And, uh, you know, so anyway, so our boy Ash, he's going out and then he meets this woman at a bar. She's sitting there. She's really upset and alone. And so he starts spewing this bullshit story because, you know, well, you remember Evil Dead 2, he lost his hand, but now he's got a wooden hand in place of it. And so, you know, he he spews this, you know, bull, cock and bull story about how he saved this child and that, you know, uh, saved it from a moving train. And, and that's how he got his hand took off and all this kind of stuff. And so she immediately falls for it. They go to the bathroom and Ash ends up getting, you know, getting a sign, you know, one of the the deadites possesses this woman and says we're coming for you and so he gets you know he he's freaked out but he's like well i can finish you know i have to hurry but he ends up you know he goes back to his trailer he's got like a he's got like a little camper trailer that he lives in and he's still got the car you know from the from the evil dead trilogy he's still got you know what they always call the classic he gets back to his trailer he finds you know finds a bag of weed then he remember he's got the book of the dead the necronomicon and then he, you know, realizes like, oh shit, he was partying with a girl one night. They were smoking weed, getting high. He was horny. He wanted to impress her. So, you know, he pulls out, you know, she said that she was like into French poetry and stuff. So he pulls out the Necronomicon and he has her like reciting the passages. And ultimately that's what ends up, you know, uh, releasing the Deadites again. Now, I know a lot of people really, really hated that. They could not stand the idea that Ash was the cause of the Deadites coming back, that the whole thing started up again because of Ash. I personally, I kind of like that idea that Ash was the one responsible for it because, you know, it really gives him a good motivation to, you know, continue to fight the Deadites, knowing that, you know, I mean, at first, yeah, he's a coward. He wants to run away from it. He doesn't want to deal with it again. You know, I mean, and it's like, in a way, yeah, that's understandable. I mean, you know, like nobody would, you know, you've seen what happens in the Evil Dead movies. You know, would you want to go through that? So it makes sense. He would never want to deal with that stuff again. But 
you know, ultimately by the end of the first episode, he realizes like he can't run from it. And that, you know, that ends up, you know, giving him an interesting character arc. At least I think it does. That he he realizes he has to stop it because he's the one who started it. You know, the deadites are back because of him, because of his stupidity and his mess up. And, you know, I think that was a great that was a great uh, character, you know, character arc for, you know, Ash and Bruce Campbell. I mean, he's. You know, what can I say? He's great. You know, I mean, I know there are people out there. They I've heard the horror stories about some people who've met him at fan conventions and things like that. And so, yeah, sometimes he's not the most pleasant person to be around, but. But you got to give him credit, man. He really, really kicks ass in the series. He really, he's, you know, he's incredibly funny. He's, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's, and that's like another thing that was great though, too, was the fact that, you know, for years when they kept at, you know, when fans at, <clears throat> at conventions and stuff kept asking, are we going to get an Evil Dead 4? And he would just always keep coming around with, oh, I'm too old for that. I can't do that anymore, you know, and stuff like that. But, you know, the fact that, you know, Sam Raimi and his brother Ivan, and you know, they decided to use that, you know, for his character. The fact that he is getting old and they're not going to try to downplay where he's like, they're not going to sit there and try to make him out like, you know, Sylvester Stallone or something in The Expendables. You know, he's, you know, they're, he's an old man. He's getting older, you know, and he's aging and he's not as, as young and, and agile as he used to be and stuff. So they, you know, they use that and they, and it, plays into the entire series which is good because it's it's kind of cool you know it doesn't make him look you know it doesn't make ash or bruce campbell look like he's so vain that he can't you know accept the fact that you know he's not that young college guy who made the first evil dead anymore you know he's not the guy who could sit there and you know flip and you know grab himself by the head and flip himself over like he did in evil dead too you know they they use that and it works and uh, so he decides he's going to try to start on a journey to, you know, at first he thinks it's a simple thing of just, you know, finding somebody who can translate the book and they can find a spell that would reverse what he's done. But then, you know, it just keeps snowballing out of his control. And, and that's what makes it interesting, makes you want to keep going and watching the series. Now we get to um, his two sidekicks, you know, and that was the thing, you know, for the most part. Uh, like in the first Evil Dead movie, you know, he had his sister Cheryl, which I'll get to her in a minute. But, um, you know, you and he had his friend Scotty, um, his girlfriend Linda, and Scotty's girlfriend Cheryl, or no, uh, Shelly. You know, that um, they did, you know, they went, he had them to bounce off of in the first movie. In the second movie, you know, you had like Annie Noby and, and the other character, Jake, and, you know, Bobby Joe and all that. Then in the third movie, you know, he had, you know, people, you know, so it was always kind of nice when he had good characters that he could bounce off of. And I know some people have kind of, you know, razzed on um, not so much Pablo so much, but uh, Kelly. I know some people have gotten, you know, kind of gotten uh, a little bit of a case on uh, Dana De Lorenzo as Kelly. I never did. I loved Kelly, the character of Kelly. I've loved her from the moment I saw her to the end, you know, till the end of season three. And um, I think she was, Kelly was what I wanted when I saw the Evil Dead remake. Because I had no problem with the idea of a woman being the hero in the Evil Dead remake. But what I, you know, but it was just like with Mia, they didn't do anything with her, you know, at least in my opinion. You know, in the beginning, she's a drug addict. She's, you know, trying to kick her habit. And, you know, then like 85% of the movie, she's possessed. Then like at the last, you know, end of the movie, then, you know, she snaps out of it. Even though she's like, you know, cutting her tongue in half and, you know, all this other kind of stuff. She's perfectly fine. Okay. And then uh, she manages to, you know, defeat the, you know, the girl from the ring or the grudge, whichever one it was. And then that's pretty much it. That's all they did with her. You know, it's like, but you know, the thing is, it's like they took Kelly and in the beginning, Kelly is, you know, she doesn't believe any of this. She thinks the whole thing is a bunch of bull. Now, Pablo is a little bit more willing to believe Ash and go along with him because, you know, Pablo believes, you know, he, he, uh, his uncle is a shaman and he, he's heard these prophecies of somebody called El Jefe and Pablo always believed that Ash is the El Jefe. And so Pablo takes it upon himself to be, um, 
Ash's sidekick and to help him out and try to help him defeat the evil and so on. And uh, so, you know, but um, Pablo is a great character. Loved him the entire series. And I know, but uh, the, the thing is, is that, you know, Kelly, when she first comes in, she's just a normal, rational woman, even though, and um, like another thing though, too, is that, uh, you know, yeah, she, she kind of has to go through it. You know, she doesn't believe it. She has to basically see it for herself and she has to kind of adapt to it to become, you know, a fighter. And she does, you know, and then we see in the beginning, you know, the one thing I do like is the dynamic between Pablo and Kelly and Ash, except for one little thing. Okay. Um, I like that, uh, you know, Pablo and Ash, they both find Kelly very attractive. And if given the chance, you know, to hook up with her, they would do it. But I like the fact that they do not talk down to her, that, you know, they treat her, they treat her as an equal, they care about her. Um, you know, they don't make, they don't spend the entire time. I mean, yeah, like a couple of times, you know, Ash has said, you know, told her like, you know, you're hot or Pablo has said she's beautiful or something like that, but they don't sit there and make lewd comments. They don't try to objectify her or anything like that. Ash kind of does a teeny bit in the beginning, but that pretty much stops. <clears throat> and the three of them, they end up creating this family, you know, because they're going around, they're trying to fight the deadites and stop everything. And, um, you know, yeah. And, uh, the one thing I didn't care for was, uh, and another thing too, I didn't care for when they, you know, after Ash goes back to the cabin, cabin in the later, in the later half of the first season and Pablo and Kelly run into, uh, these hitchhikers, one of them being Samara Weaving, who, uh, you know, now we know her from, you know, I think she was probably pretty unknown when she did this, but <clears throat> we now know her from, you know, the Netflix movie, The Babysitter. We know her from Ready or Not. She plays, you know, one of the daughters in Bill and Ted Face the Music. You know, so, I mean, she's been around. She's, you know, she's, her career is picking up. And I'm, the thing that bothered me, I just wish they could have done more with her, you know, in this season. I just wish her character would have been a little bit bigger. But, you know, honestly, in this one, she's just kind of there to be dead-eyed bait. So, but um, the one thing I didn't care for was the fact that, um, uh, Samara Weaving's character asks Kelly if Pablo is single, if he's seeing anybody. And, uh, you know, Kelly tells her character that, um, that, uh, she's, yeah, Pablo's not available and stuff. And it's like, you, you kind of get a little irritated. It's like, okay, Kelly, you don't want Pablo for yourself, but you don't want him to be with anybody else. That's a little, that's a little rude. Okay. But then we get to the other character, uh, Ruby played by, uh, What's her name? Lucy Lawless. Damn, escape me for a minute. Lucy Lawless, I think, you know, she was she was fun, but I gotta be honest, just personally, I felt by the third season, I was getting a little bit tired of her. You know, I mean, the first season, okay, you know, you you know, they kind of set her up that she's a noby, that she's looking for Ash because she wants to get revenge on him because she thinks that he killed, you know, Annie and killed her parents and so on and so forth. But then we come to find out that actually she's one of the dark ones and you know, that, uh, just turns out she's evil and all this by the second season. I liked her a bit more because her character went through different peaks and valleys. You know, it's like, she's, she's evil. Then she's trying to be good. Then she has kind of a, a Jekyll and Hyde thing going on. Then there's a separate Ruby who's pretty much all evil. And then by the time we get to the third season, I was just kind of like, okay, yeah. I mean, it's like, we already got enough going on with the deadites and stuff. I just kind of felt like with Ruby, I was just kind of like, can we just kind of be done with her? And, um, but I mean, nothing against Lu Lucy Lawless. She was great on the show the entire time she was on there. Um, but yeah. And then the rest of the show. And, but one thing I will say though, that's great about this show is in my opinion, now people talk about how, you know, like, like recently the new star Wars movies, they're all into fan service and everything else. And I see what they're getting at, but <clears throat> to me, it's like, this is how you do fan service right, you know, because by the end, by heading towards the end of the first season, Ash goes back to the cabin and they reconstruct the cabin. They do it very, very well. They, you know, they, um, they pay so much attention to detail and, and they try to construct the cabin perfectly. 
And uh, then even in the second season, you know, we head back towards the cabin again. And one thing that, you know, and like other bits of fan service, I like that in season two that they brought Ellen Sandweiss back to play Cheryl. And I swear to God, you know, just for me personally, it's like when they when they got her there and they put her in the makeup and everything, they made her look like a dead eye. It was like no time passed between the first movie and season two of Ash vs. Evil Dead. And it's like, oh my God, Ellen still got it. She still got it. She still, I mean, it's like she was pitch perfect. You couldn't ask for better. And then like another thing that I thought was fantastic was um, um, I like that Ted Raimi in season two, he comes he comes in to play a character that's like a buddy of Ash's named Chet. And that was pretty cool. But then also too, that Ted Raimi, you know, donned the costume of evil Henrietta again. And, you know, like when you think about like, you know, you see the bonus features on evil dead two, and you think of all the, the horrors that he had to endure to play that character. Like, you know, you see on the video, you know, like they take his, they took they took it, the booties off that he was wearing, like just sweat pouring out of them. Even in the movie, you know, they talk about that one part where he's like, ah, you see just sweat just pouring out of his ear and all that stuff. And, you know, and just the fact that, you know, he did it for the fans. He came back and did it again. You know, that was so cool. And like, this is how you do fan service, right? In my opinion. But then, you know, um, one thing that I thought was interesting that, one of the reasons why I wish we could have had a little bit more of um, this series was that in season three, we find out that Ash has a daughter. And at first, you know, it's like, okay, well, all right. So, okay, whatever. But then you realize like once he, once he connects with his daughter, they have good chemistry as a father daughter team. And, you know, you know, I gotta be honest. One of the things I thought was that maybe they somehow were able to get Jane Levy from the evil Dead remake. And that she was going to be his daughter, you know, uh, you know, yeah, that, that's what I thought was going to end up happening. Jean, did I say Jean Levy? Jane Levy. I thought they got, and I thought it was going to be that, okay, it was going to turn out that Mia from the Evil Dead remake was going to be Ash's daughter. Unfortunately, it didn't go that way, but still, hey, you know, it was okay. And, uh, you know, they had great chemistry and I like the, you know, towards the end of the third season, you know, when he, when Ash decides he needs to go ahead and make the ultimate sacrifice and that, you know, his daughter is like, dad, you promised you wouldn't leave me. And and he's all like, you know, it's like, I know, I, you know, it's, you know, I want to keep my promise, but this is all my fault. And that was the thing. Like I said, I know a lot of people didn't like that. Ash was the reason for the deadites coming back. But like I said, to me, I think that really worked for his character that, you know, he had to, he had to fight and he had to do all this because it was his fault and he had to go into it again. So, you know, personally, just, I thought that was, that was awesome. But, um, yeah, just, you know, Bruce Campbell, he delivered, you know, Sam Raimi, you know, uh, Rob Tappert. One thing I thought was funny was, uh, the story that Rob Tappert told was about how, uh, Lucy Lawless, he said that, uh, when, you know, he met, you know, cause Rob Tappert, Lucy Lawless, they're married in real life. And I thought it was funny when he told the story about how when he first met her and he talked to her about the movie Evil Dead. And at this point, she didn't know that he was the producer of Evil Dead, but she thought that the movie was sick and disgusting and, and it was horrible. And the people who made it were, were complete psychopaths and all this stuff. Little did she know she would end up being married to one of the people who made the show, made the movies. And not only would she end up marrying one of them, she would end up in Evil Dead herself, you know. And like another thing, and you know, like you know, um, like I thought it was amazing that they got Lee Majors to play, you know, Ash's father. And uh, like in the first season, uh, who was it? Um, Mimi Rogers. You know, it's like I remember seeing Mimi Rogers in like comedies and dramas and stuff, like way back in the '80s and stuff. If you going back to the '80s, and you told me after I watched Evil Dead. If you went back and told me that, oh, Mimi Rogers is going to play a part in Evil Dead one day, I never would have believed you. But, I mean, it's here. It's right there. She's in it. So, never would have thought that. But, but um, yeah. The, but the thing I love about this show is it delivers on both counts. Now, I mean, I know, like, some people, 
some people hated Army of Darkness because Army of Darkness cut back on the gore, but delivered, you know, above and beyond as far as like the imagination, the craziness, everything else. People really love that, you know, but uh, then like the remake, people hated the fact that, you know, it cut back on the, excuse me, it cut back on the creative ideas. It cut back on the, um, excuse me, sorry. It cut back on the whole wild aspect of the original Evil Dead movies and things like that. But it amped up the gore. Now this here, you know, what I love about this series, it delivers both in equal measure. There's a lot of interesting things. There's a lot of fun. You know, it's like, uh, I'm pretty much taught. I I know I've kind of given away a couple of things, but I'm pretty sure just about everybody's watching this video has probably already seen the series. So you, know, you already know what I'm talking about. But, um, you know, there are so many interesting and creative things they did. Like, I love the, you know, I love the episodes where the classic, the car becomes possessed. You know, like these kids, they steal the classic from, from Ash and Kelly and Pablo, and then the car becomes possessed. You know, it starts chasing people around, do crazy stuff and everything. I love that, you know, and, and just, uh, you know, more, you know, uh, just, you know, the two, ev you know, the two ashes fighting each other, everything else. You know, I love that, you know, it, it, it pays so much tribute, but it's continuing on. And I don't know where we go from here, folks. I don't, you know, I'm, you know, I've heard the same rumors that you have. Is that, you know, Raimi and Bruce Campbell, Rob Tappert, they're talking about they want to continue Evil Dead in some kind of, you know, incantation. That um, there's talk about maybe they're hinting at maybe there's a chance that Bruce might come back and, and play Ash in some form. You know, I think he's done it for video games. But, you know, we don't know where we go from here. We don't know if they're going to reboot it again. Who's to say? But, you know. We'll find out. But, you know, if this is all we get, you know, we got the trilogy. We got the three seasons of the show. I'll go ahead and be generous and even count the remake. I mean, I know probably some people are probably going to be like, hey, fuck you, man. I like the remake better than the other shit. But, you know, just I'm sorry. OK, to me, this is Evil Dead. You know, Ash is Evil Dead to me. So but anyway, that's pretty much it. You know, Ash versus Evil Dead. I can't, you know, if you're a fan of it. That's a good question. Like, would you have to be a fan? Would you have to know the movies to watch the show? Probably not, but I I would think, yeah, it wouldn't hurt if you already knew, you know, if you really watched the movies before you get into the show. So you at least have the whole kind of backstory. But I think you could go ahead and probably watch the series, even if you've never seen the movies. But if anything else, watch the series. It'll probably get you to want to check out the movies. But yeah, Ash vs. Evil Dead, love that show. I wish we could have gotten more, but at the same time, though, I'm glad that it stopped after season three because, like I said, it leaves you wanting more. It doesn't wear out its welcome. It doesn't get tiring or anything like that. Um, I know I'm going to probably piss off some people, but, you know, it's like Walking Dead. You know, I was a fan of Walking Dead for a number of years, but by after season eight, I was just kind of like, oh, I'm just done with it. You know, especially when you're sitting here like trying to make me, you know, you're trying to make, I mean, I know that Andrew Lincoln and, and Lauren Cohan want to leave and stuff, but it's like, uh, now you're sitting here like you want me to sit here and root for Negan and all that stuff. And I was just, oh, come on, I'm done. I'm just done with Walking Dead. But but that was it, you know? So yeah, we got, you know, you know, three, gate, three great seasons and there you go. I think I've gone on too long. So if anybody took the time to watch this video, I thank you for doing it. I appreciate you for doing it. I honestly hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please leave a like. If you haven't already, go and subscribe to the Body Bags channel. There's a different reviewer for every day of the week. I'm the Friday reviewer. We have different guys doing different stuff. Everybody's doing great things. We got, you know, we got another label week coming up. I believe Wild Eye is going to be our next one. And then uh, also, too, uh, we got more, um, you know, we got more theme weeks. Uh, I can't remember what next month's is, but anyway, so take care, have a good night, and I'll see you later.